I mean, all right. I mean, it's all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> here we go. The ringtone. Um, all right, here we go. Ready or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome to the Dudu and Foo show. I am one of your hosts, Dan Dudu Savage. I'm Mike Christofoli Foo. How about that? We are on episode 14. <laughs> like, mind is blown. Yeah. 14 straight weeks of a, of a podcast. Yeah. And uh, we're going a little early today, uh, and the reason is because it's a holiday. No, I'm just kidding. The reason is? I'm going out of town tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, I got to get some last-minute stuff done uh, before I go. Yeah, going back to going to Omaha again. Going to Omaha. Steve, Laura, I'll see you in the morning. Uh, yeah, we'll go, uh, all right, we'll go to the Clancy's Pub, of course, like we always do. And Clancy's? And Clancy's see the bartender? And see uh, bartender Crystal and the manager Randy. Randy. And crew, yeah, so we'll be there, Randy be there and tomorrow. Crew. Yeah. Yep, that's exciting. Um, have yeah. you taken a peek at the weather? Uh, yes. Uh, I was, uh, actually, <laughs> Steve texted me the other day, it was 104 there, it'll be, by Saturday it'll be 79, 80. Ah. Um, of course, out there, what comes with that is a little humidity as the hotter it gets out there, right? Yep. But, and I think the last day when I, I'm there, I think I'm supposed to get some pretty good rain. Mm. So maybe I come back on Tuesday, maybe I don't, I don't know, uh, we'll see. You never know with these airlines, <laughs> huh? What what, yeah. what, uh, what airline are you flying? Uh, Southwest. Southwest? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. they're pretty good on time. It's not a, yeah. not a super budget airline but um yeah sometimes weather can't be controlled and yeah yeah um yeah though that's fun that's exciting Uh, yeah you feel like you were just there i mean had to have been two months ago two months ago yeah yeah yeah. so that's your home away from home at this point other than of course new york um yeah so today is june 26th this will be our last podcast of june um actually next thursday we got to talk about because that's fourth of july so yes we got to figure out if we're going to do a podcast again maybe a day early or we do it on yeah. the holiday yeah eh, we'll figure that out later um yep. but yeah last uh last podcast 14th podcast yeah, no. it's insane <laughs> um today for those of you who know uh, my my buddy matt zimmerman who there's a potential we might get a call in from him today I brought him up a few times. Yeah. Him and I did a radio show. We've done two radio shows. One uh, was uh, Savage Sports. It was on Blog Talk Radio. It was uh, like a, a, a straight computer platform program. But we did it for like two years. And it was a blast. And we had Collins and all that stuff. And um, Matt's one of the people, I th- you know too, and of course my buddy George, is yeah. today is like a holiday for me yeah, because of the NBA draft. Uh-huh. So... We're going to try to get George on the phone here in a little oh, that'd bit. That would be great. So yeah. George Thomas, my buddy, uh, was a high school teammate of my brother's. They went to college together. George and I um, ended up becoming pretty good friends, really good friends over yeah. the years. Yeah. And um, I, I want to say I was probably, oh, boy, I want to say 20, maybe 22 years old, we started doing a draft game. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. So that's what, 28 years ago, 28, 29, 30 years, 30 ago. 30 years ago, 30 years right? Ago. Yeah. So 30 years ago, we started this little draft challenge. Maybe maybe he'll have some insight as to when it started. I want to say like 93, okay. maybe even 92, <laughs> and it may even be earlier because I'm trying to judge when I met Julie and trying to put some pieces together right. in my brain. <clears throat> so what we do is, and I think you did a year yeah, or two I with did, us. I did a few of them, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I so was out there the one year we did it. You were out in Cape Cod, yeah, Pine yeah. Lane, Buzzards Bay. Yeah. Were, Mike was out and sitting at Queen Sewell Pond. Yeah, Kelly um, and I came out there. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. So what this NBA draft thing is and why this is one of my favorite days in the world, and, and, and this year is going to be no different, is what we do is we create our list. And I'm telling you, but I'm kind of telling the audience. Yeah. We create our list, our draft list. I actually have mine here. I'm not going to show it because George cheats, <laughs> and he's going to – He's going to see my list and change his. No, he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> cheat. He accuses me of cheating every year, but he doesn't cheat. Um, so we make our draft list of who we think is going to get drafted, number one, two, three, four, all the way through two rounds. Yep. And what happens is, um, like we both had Wembenyama number one yeah. last year. Yeah. So if you pick the person in the correct spot, you get 10 points. Yep. If you get it in the wrong spot, say I had Wembenyama two, but he went one, I missed it by one space, so you're minus one. And we just keep a rolling tally throughout the draft, yeah. get to the end of the first round, and then it continues until all of your first round people have been picked, yep. which is crazy because one year I had a player that I had like 27th, 
and didn't even get drafted. Ooh. I had him in the first round. He didn't get drafted. Something happened the day before, and that smoked me because I was like yeah. 40 spots off, minus 40. So, But it, what's, it's fun. Y'all, this year's a little bit different. We're going to talk about that. But usually you know the first couple or you know who's going to take what. Usually. This year is bananas. Yeah. Like there is no rhyme or reason. Mm -mm. I still hear people talking about the first pick. It could be one of two people. The consensus is the same guy, which I think George and I will probably have. I can't give too much information <laughs> on this particular podcast. So anyway, we at one point we had a Burger King crown um, with the, the the dates and who won. Yeah, and it, it, one year it came down to a one point, oh. one freaking point was the winner. And some years it's absolute blowouts. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if George cor corroborates any of this information I'm given now because okay. it's been a lot of years. The, the streak, I have the streak of the most consecutive hits, mm. 11. That's I hit solid. the first 11 picks wow, of an solid. NBA draft. Strong. No matter how, and George still to this day says I bought my picks from somebody. I don't, who sells their picks? Right, like, for the draft. Yeah, yeah, he said I bought my picks. But anyway, I hit the 11 in a row, and we've done everything. We've done them in person. We've done, you know, in college we made it a drinking game. Like, yeah. you know, we, we had fun with it. Uh, one year, I had a little too much time on my hands, and I had this big, huge poster board. <laughs> yeah. And it had the number of the pick and the team logo, and then the name covered. So it was like freaking Wheel of Ford. I mean, it was like Family Feud. <laughs> when the number one pick was announced, I'd rip it off, and there it was. Oh, and I had this, no, oh man. That's we've awesome. Done, yeah. We've done all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. So we don't have a full tally of... Um, of who's won the most and lost the most, All but right. I bet you it's pretty freaking close. No, I, I would believe so. Yeah. yeah. And COVID threw us for a loop. It was almost a year we didn't do it. And actually, George saved the day because I was like, buddy, I can't. I like I was I was in the middle of doing some work stuff. Trent and I were buying storage units and I was knee deep. I couldn't, yeah. I didn't have my list done. I usually have it a couple days before, I didn't have it done. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's been 25 yeah. years. You can't not do a list. Right. Let's just get it done. Just go. Yeah. So I did. I went home and so glad I did. So now the tradition continues. Five o'clock Pacific time, eight o'clock East Coast time. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's the draft, man. The draft. The two, day, two, day, uh, two day draft this year. And right. Tomorrow's earlier. I think tomorrow is four o'clock Eastern and one o'clock Pacific. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's, I don't understand. Yeah. The, is, is that a revenue thing like why are they making it two days when there's only 60 yeah. well 58 picks whatever it is maybe because the well the first round's prime time 60 picks right so maybe not so much interest in the rest of the yeah, draft the second they don't, round they don't is want it two, time. two minutes yeah. it, it flies by i yeah nba i'm not feeling it throwing that out there <laughs> um let's keep it one day i mean the second round takes an hour and a half you know yeah. it's really yeah. weird so yeah. i'm excited tonight julie and i um uh, one of our friends here, Brett, our trainer, uh, gifted us a uh, staycation at the Red Rock. Yeah, so we're going nice. to be up at the Red Rock Casino, and we'll probably go down the sports book and hang out and get a piece of pizza from our favorite pizza place. The side piece is very nice place really good eat. pizza, yeah, East good Coast pizza. flavor. Yeah. Um, so what do you know about this year's draft? What do you not know? What are you excited to see, or do you even care? <laughs> no, I, I care a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I got when I get home, I got to do some last-minute stuff, of course, but I'll have the TV on. But yeah, like you says, it, I don't think the number one pick is a lock this year from no. what we're hearing. You know, and that with uh, and that Alex uh, Saar, Saar, right? He, he's been projecting the number one pick for the longest time, but maybe not now, right? Uh, Zachariah Rishar Rish is, or however you say, Rishar. Rishar and and, and Shepherds, people are high on Shepherd, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, look, I know Alex Saar. What is he? Nineteen. He's young, right? Another yep. young kid. I had to go look at some stuff for him just so I know what I'm you know, just so I know yeah. about him a little bit. Yep. And everything I saw, Dan, didn't see much film or highlights, whatever they did with him on rebounding mm. or mm. on ball defense. Everything yeah. was weak side Offense. defense coming off the you know, oh. weak side blocking shots. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, he's got a shot for a big guy, right? All these yeah. big guys nowadays have a yep. shot. He can shoot from outside. Look like he could pass a little bit, but yeah. I found it interesting what I was why it was a fifteen minute piece what I was watching. Yeah. Didn't see much rebounding or, or huh. on ball defense. So I don't know. Now in that piece, did they mention that he didn't even work out for the Atlanta Hawks? It was or did it, you see it that? was music. It, there was no it was uh, okay. no no audio, no talk. It was a music piece yeah. for fifteen minutes. But yeah. that's what I noticed. So yeah. I'm sure, obviously the NBA knows what this catch sure. is. They got yeah, they, yeah. No, they no, saw I mean, more than what I saw. Listen, it, it sounds like the first 
uh, I'd say the first three picks, like you said, Shepard, first three picks are pretty solid NBA players. I mean, it's, yeah. you never know. I mean, I hate to bring this up and seeing as we're in Las Vegas and all, but you know, you got your Anthony Bennett's and you got your, yeah, you know, man. there's busts, man. Yeah. There's busts. There is, it's it's, it's going to happen. And, and, you know, we've yeah. had um, some foreign players, some foreign born players that, uh, Dario Sarkic, uh, uh, Darko, uh, Mil- Darko Milicic. Milicic. He was number yeah. two to the I mean, Pistons. We talked about that before. Yeah. I mean, so there's no guarantee, but no. It, I think at this point in the, uh, I don't even want to say growth of the foreign game because the foreign game is out of this world yeah. good right now, yeah. is I think it's pretty hard to, to screw up a foreign player at this point. I mean, NBA scouts live overseas. Yeah. Every single team has multiple scouts that oh, live yeah. overseas. Yeah. So they're, um, if they're in the conversation of these top picks, they're uh, they're legit and they're going to be big time. But yeah, um, let's do this. Let's throw the headphones on. Call him George. We're gonna we're gonna get George on early. <laughs> I love it. And uh, he said he's stuck in traffic. We're gonna find out more about that in a minute. Um, I hope he has good reception. He's Verizon guys. Let's give George Thomas from Falmouth, Massachusetts, a call. Hello. All right, buddy. Here it is. You are live on the Doo Doo and Foo Show. What's happening? So much. How you doing? I'm good. I, so I just, I just told, uh, I just let the audience know about our our history with the draft and um, some of the fun, crazy stuff we've done over the years. And uh, so I thought, what better day to have GT10 join the join the join the show than on draft day? So what do you think? What's the yeah, I've already told. I've already joked around with the audience. I can't give my picks because if George hears them, that's an unfair advantage. Correct. So, so don't tell me your picks. But what do you? What's your overall take on the draft this year? It's, not, it's just all in the air, up in the air. I, uh, I've actually got four different drafts done. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know which one I'm turning in. So <laughs> I'm hoping to hear something. You know? Yeah. No. Because, hey, look. Yeah. If it, Atlanta could make. <laughs> That's why I got four of them. Yeah. That's no. what I'm going to do. That, that's what, I'm hoping to get the information about that before I turn one in, you know? Yeah, that's what Mikey was just saying. And I was actually telling the audience, I don't know if you remember, Mikey did two or three years with us in the yeah. draft. He, he submitted yeah. a list. Remember, I was out there the one year, George. Remember that? Kelly and I yeah. went out there. Yeah. 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 So we've, uh, and, and, and of course, I, I was saying, I don't know, let's get your take. Let's see how much you back up what I just said. I think we've been doing this close to 30 years. Is that pretty accurate? I was pretty sure it's close to 35. Wow. wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. 35 years. I want to say probably around 88. Wow. Yeah. 87, 88, yeah. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? That's so awesome. we've been going that long. Uh, here's well, m- think about it. Think about uh, maybe we have probably already been doing maybe four or five years at least before Pierce. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was well before Pierce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When Pierce slipped in the draft, some of the old timers were. Oh well, how about uh? Well, I, I'll Vince tell you. Carter. Well, I'll tell you this real quick. It was ninety six when I was out there. Ninety six. So, so you guys were doing it well before oh, we were that. Doing it well before yeah, that. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's wow. Yeah. Holy yeah, smokes. Jimmy. Holy oh smokes! I mean, that is unbelievable. And I said. I actually was just telling the story about three years ago. I was like, dude, I can't do it. I don't have a list. I'm busted. I, I'm i in the middle of moving freaking uh, storage units. And you were like, bro, what are you doing? Like, just slap something together. And I'm glad I did to keep the, <laughs> keep the streak alive. Yeah. Just print out ESPN, whatever you got. Ah, well, and now here's the next part I want you to hold me to. I said... You know, I, the the record for the most consecutive consecutive hits is eleven, and you still to this day swear that I bought that list from somebody. So tell the audience where I bought it from. <laughs> well, I, I was trying to figure that out. Um, I don't know if it's some Vegas guy, or <laughs> but you know, someone. Was, <laughs> it couldn't it have been right. me. Yeah, it, it couldn't have been just me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, no, it's 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 exciting. I was just kind of saying where Julie and I are heading up to the Red Rock. We got a, su- a suite up at the resort up there, and we're gonna be hanging out at the at the sports book. I got my list ready to fire over at about five minutes to five our time, five minutes to eight your time, 
And uh, I have a funny feeling that we're not going to have a lot in common this year. I think this is going to be the year we have the least. (laughs) Well, your your list one to four might be different. I mean, other than even the top pick. It depends on which one I send you. Let's do this. There's 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 one pick that we can talk about. I think we can all talk about. All right. That we that won't won't ruin either of our I believe. Well, maybe no, I'm wrong. Don't say number two. No, no, no. No, no. no. I'm going to say num- right. I'm going to say number 56. Wh- who is who do you have going to the Lakers at 56? I know where you're going with uh, this. 50, well, yeah, 55, right? Is it 55? <laughs> Well, oh, two, yeah, two four, lost yeah, anyways, a, yeah, yeah. I have forty nine as a no pick and and uh, fifty nine right. as a no pick. So yeah, fifty six, fifty five. But anyway, the yeah, Lakers. Uh, uh, they're gonna take Bronny. Yeah, I do too. All right, so there you go. We're, I think <laughs> I think both of us are gonna get ten points on that pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean the only other team is possibly Miami. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the thought of bringing LeBron back, you know, mm-hmm. I, I still think late forties, early fifties, a team could take him and hold him hostage for some picks. You know, get get something better uh, with LA. It, it, I I don't discount that, but I think I'm, we'd be a fool in this competition yeah. to not put him there because yeah. what you got to put likely picks where likely picks are going to yeah. happen. Yeah. You know, um, best we can do. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a goofy draft. I'm excited for it. Uh, the two days, I'm not loving. I I just think it's again, it's I don't understand the second day. So what, let's let's hash this out right now. We're we're this is the rules committee. Uh, me and you, Mikey, will be the tiebreaker. So what do we do at the end of tonight? Are we able to rework the rest of the draft before the the, the second day starts? Yeah. All right. But I say yeah. But I say obviously you, you know can't pick someone a second time of course yeah yeah no for yeah. sure yeah yeah no i mean after the first round's done um so we'll we'll have a second day i don't like it i do not like the second day yeah. of the draft i i didn't read up on it well, and know why they're doing it but it's different for sure yeah yeah it's uh might be a little easier keeping track oh it will yeah yeah because it gets late it gets late and uh after a couple Kool-Aids, you start to lose track. You start to nod off, all those things. Um, so I got two questions for you before we let you go. Number one is who is the greatest ball handler in the history of the NBA? It's got to be Kyrie. Kyrie? Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he basically just runs around in the ball. Somehow. Yeah. It's on a string. Bounces next to him. Yeah. Yeah, I a little slice of me thought you'd have some Kenny Anderson in you just because you're a G- Georgia Tech uh, fan. I put him at like three. Yeah, yeah. Just because of the same thing, and then you got uh, uh, what was that guy's name? There's well, another one, man. Can't think of his name. You got some Pistol Pete's. You got some. You got some odd ones. Uh, you know, Jason Williams and all those. But uh, Kyrie's a safe pick. That's a that's yeah. a legit number one. So the second question is, uh, we're going to test your trivia knowledge here. What is the national animal of Scotland? Do you know this one, Mike? That one I do not. You don't know? No. You're not Scottish? (laughs) Not the slightest. (laughs) I'll go sheep. It's a great guess, but it's a unicorn. How can that be? Isn't that bananas? How can the that be? national How can animal be? of Scotland is a unicorn, something that doesn't exist. It's Porzingis. Porzingis. Oh boy, now you just you just led me into my uh, the next segment of our show too. I'll I'll fill you in on that later. But apparently, uh, yeah, that's uh, Porzingis came up this weekend at my. Uh, I had a well. I, we'll keep George on the on the phone. I'll yeah. start this one off. I had a fifty and over basketball tournament. It was a national tournament. Teams from Chicago. Detroit, San Diego, New York, two Big, from Hawaii, Big Arizona, yeah. Oregon. I mean, some of the best 50-plus players in the world, uh, in the country. And I got to play on a team. Uh, we, were, we were called the Motown Cactus because half of our team is from Detroit, half is from Phoenix. There we go. So Motown Cactus, and they picked me up. And uh, first game of the tournament, I go nine for nine. I hit all nine shots. I hit, like, four free throws. Two of the nine were threes. And... I'm dominating the game. We actually, we played a team from Houston, Texas, and we smoked them. And I had to 
one of the best games I've probably had in 20 years. <laughs> and there's a guy getting ready to shoot a corner three, and I'm in the paint defensively, and I close out and I block his shot into the next court. A three. And everybody starts chanting Porzingis. <laughs> so for the rest, listen, for the rest of the tournament, every court I go on, I got people watching me to see how many shot blocks, how many uh, block shots I'm going to get. And uh, and I don't know, my body responded. I'm almost 50, 52, and I was jumping out of the gym. Now listen, five games later, I couldn't walk. I could for two days. I haven't been able to. I. You could have put me in a wheelchair. I was, <laughs> but I tell you what, for those five games, we we ended up in fourth place. Um, we beat the eventual champs in in pool play, um, right. but man, what a freaking tournament! And hence the name Dudu. If you go back to episode one, well, find yeah. out the nickname. There you go. Well, listen on on yeah. one call here. I got George is the original funnel, and Mikey is the West Coast version of the funnel. <laughs> like, if there's two people in this world that know what the word funnel means, yeah. it's there. One's on the line, and one's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> That's crazy. Good stuff. All right, bud. Well, I'll be uh, I'll be contacting you in about a little less than three hours, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yep. All right. All right, man. Hi, George. Sounds good. We'll see you. Yep. Take care. See ya. You know what the interesting part about the Kyrie is? Yeah. Remember when we did that episode with the ball handling? Mm-hmm. And who did we say like great right at? Because you know that's off the cuff of what you do. You're trying to think real yeah. quick, and and we always say, yeah, when we get home, we'll think of somebody. Yeah. Who was who was the guy when we got home? The guy I told yeah. you, I said, oh, we forgot about Kyrie. Yeah. George Isn't, brings up how Kyrie. Do you, how do you forget Kyrie yeah. too? I mean, he does have that ball on a string. Yeah. Um. It's nah, just a random question to see what somebody thinks. But, yeah, for those that don't know, Georgia Tech is George Thomas' GT, GT, Georgia yeah, Tech, George yeah, Thomas. Yeah. So he's just a diehard Georgia Tech fan. Yeah. Um, so I thought for sure. Like you said, uh, you know, Kenny Anderson had that ball on a string too, and he oh, was yeah. he had him at that, that three spot. But, yeah, that's uh, – he still thinks I bought those 11 picks. <laughs> He thinks there's somebody out here with a so-called tout sheet, right? Right. There's, that there, uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a Vegas sharp out here that does NBA draft lists and sells them, and and somehow I found the courage and the money to buy one. The, you know what I mean? But no, I, I hit 11, 11 hits in a row. I had 110 yeah, that's, points. That's, I don't think the I don't think the top 11 executives in this year's draft can round that up and be, be consistent Listen, on that one. It was lightning in a bottle. Yeah. It was one of those things. I don't I don't think anybody could ever do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, the NBA draft super exciting. Um, got a couple rapid fires for you here. Yep. I'm gonna tell you about this person. You're gonna see if you can tell me who it is. Oh shoot. Okay. Yep. This this person started their career with the Houston Rockets. Later played for the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Lakers and the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, geez, he stayed right in that same area. Won a whole bunch of championships. That's your clue. Started with the Rockets. Went to the Spurs. Won championships with the Rockets, Lakers, oh. and Spurs. Robert Ory. Robert Ory. Got it. That was a good one. All right, let's see if we can... <laughs> let's see if we can... Uh... Stump him. He's on, he's one and zero. Oh. I'm already looking for Might a tough the one. only one I get. <laughs> nah, no, no, no. Here we go. Let's go. Hmm, all right. Started his career with the Boston Celtics. Was traded to the Toronto Raptors. Ooh. Then the Denver Nuggets. Ooh, yeah, that's a tough one. I think that's a tough L one. Already. Later signed with the Minnesota Timberwolves as a free agent. Then left the Wolves to play with the Detroit Pistons, where he won a ring as a starter. He won the ring with Drafted, the Pistons. That's a, big, that's a big hint there. Drafted by the, by the Celtics, Celtics. Won the ring with the Pistons. I want to say he was either the third or sixth pick. Ooh. The other pick, if he was the third, the sixth pick was Ron Mercer in that oh, draft with the Celtics. There. Yeah. Drafted by the Celts, yeah. ended up with the Pistons, and started on that winning Pistons team. Piece of cake. <laughs> I have a feeling your dad's yelling at the screen right now. No, it's, it, yeah, it's escaping me. Chauncey Billups. Oh, Chauncey. Yeah, geez, Colorado right. Buffaloes. Yeah, I didn't realize he played for that many teams. I figured he played for Toronto. Toronto blew my mind. I didn't know yeah, him. From, I don't remember him going from the Celtics to Toronto. And that's why when you said I remember Boston, Denver. Yeah. 
Yeah. I and I remember Denver. a little bit vaguely of the Timberwolves. I don't even remember the Timberwolves, to be honest with you. I don't. I didn't know he did all that before he got to the Pistons. Yeah, no. I, don't, I just, I totally don't remember Toronto, Toronto for some reason. Hmm. Oh, that's a tough name. I don't think you'll get that one. <laughs> one of the most traveled NBA players in history. This is news to me. Started playing with the San Antonio Spurs, Charlotte Hornets, Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors, Los Angeles Clippers, Toronto Raptors, Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Nets, Vancouver Grizzlies, Houston Rockets, Vancouver, Memphis Grizzlies, <laughs> Utah Jazz, San Antonio Spurs. What journeyman big man am I? I mean, I, I'm not even going to leave you with it. Um, he was drafted 43rd in the draft by the Spurs in 1990. Surprisingly, scored 34 points in a game for the Grizzlies in 1998. Yeah. Went to Maryland. Tony Massenberg. Yeah, Massenberg. Yeah, I forgot all about Tony Massenberg. Yeah. He played for half the league. Yeah, I remember watching him in college. Yeah. Do you imagine the retirement package that guy's got? <laughs> Great college player. Oh, oh phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. In Maryland? Yeah. yeah he, was, he was a beast. Let's see. I'll give you one more. <laughs> I like that uh, Chauncey Phillips one. Um, yeah, I don't think you'll. There's a couple. There's a, like, there's a Sam Cassell one. There's a. All right, this is a good one. This is a real good one. Okay. Drafted by the Orlando Magic, was quickly traded to the Golden State Warriors. Later in his career, traded to the Washington Bullets and the Sacramento Kings. Multi team all star. Who is he? No. Uh, my first instinct was Otis Smith until you said multi team all star. Drafted 1993. Yeah. Uh, by Orlando. Mm -hmm. Think about it. All right, let's, let's break that one down. Yep. Drafted by Orlando and yep. quickly. Traded to the Golden State oh, Warriors. So that was uh, sounds like a draft day trade. Yeah. Magic to the Warriors draft day. Finished with the Bullets and the Kings. Multi-year All Star. Yeah, no, I don't know. That's a good one, Dan. They traded. Otis Thorpe was traded for him. Yeah, that one I don't know. I remember Thorpe playing for a couple teams, so I don't know what trade that would have been with Thorpe. Played at University of Michigan. Because Thorpe was, uh, nah. University of Michigan? Yeah. The Orlando, being drafted by Orlando and draft day trade to to Golden State's what's, what's throwing me. Not Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway? Nope. No. I don't even know if Tim, Tim Hardaway didn't even, he played at UTEP, never mind. Yep. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he played with Tim Hardaway. At Michigan? I mean, no, no. Uh, at uh, Golden State. At Golden State? It's the power forward. Chris Weber. Oh, Weber. Oh, you're right, yeah. See, I forgot all about yeah. Weber being drafted. You're right, because it was draft day trade. You're right. Yeah, draft day we trade. Chris played Weber, for yeah. the Bullets. Washington Bullets. Yeah, the Bullets, yeah. Yeah, Sacramento yeah. Kings, multi-team all-star, drafted yeah. 93. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Okay. Yeah, you know, just shake up some uh, yeah. shake up some time it's here draft, on the draft, draft day. day. Yeah. Why not? Um, yeah. Let's see. What do we else? What else do we got here? Well, you know what we didn't talk about at first is we had a had just had some uh, some good grub, brought some El Pollo Loco, yeah. and El Pollo Loco is known for their chicken, right? Right. What did they not have today? <laughs> they didn't have chicken. There you go. Can you believe that? Went to go pick it Welcome up. Welcome to the chicken place. We're out of chicken. Everybody's walking in. The lady's saying, "Anybody here to order chicken? We don't have chicken other than in the salads." I mean, did, was she like? Attention, yeah. attention, folks. You we said, do not have chicken. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That behind the counter, they had, the, and, and you know, and you look on the grill because you know how El Pollo mm. Local does it, and yeah. that grill was not even half full of chicken. That's crazy. I, I don't know what happened, what was going on. It kind of <laughs> threw the chicken order shortage. off. Chicken shortage. But we made it happen. We got the tostada chicken salad, oh. or salad and the regular chicken salad. I love it. Uh, yeah. for, for fast food, like you said, that was on my top five. Yeah. El Pollo Loco, I think, came in fifth. Yeah. Is it just tastes good, tastes fresh, and it is pretty quick. And uh, I'm just thankful they had enough chicken for our meals. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. You, you, you experienced some good customer service, too, huh? Uh, Jan, uh, great lady. Uh, little lady, uh, shorter than me. Uh, she's probably in her uh, in her sixties. Um, she was awesome. Yeah, you know, the, I had some questions for her because I'm thinking I'm in a hurry, but I got here on time. But um, yeah, and then she was out serving um, 
serving somebody around the tables and I told her, you know, I appreciate her, uh, yeah. her hustle, her work ethic. Yeah. And she had a look on her face. Uh, you know, she was shocked that I said that. So obviously they don't hear that enough, you know, but you could tell she's an old school worker. Great work ethic. I, told her, I said, I like, I like your work ethic. Oh, that's awesome. And she appreciated that. And, um, and uh, as I'm leaving, she, had, you know, as I'm waiting for the order, she says, "What's your order number?" I, I, I show her the ticket. She goes, "I'm gonna go get that for you." Nice, right? nice. So she goes and gets it. And what does she do? She goes, "Do a couple bag of chips in there for you." Ah, there you go. Right? See? Yeah, so, man. But uh, yeah, she was great. She That's was good. great. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's always good when you find. You know, there was uh, just down the street at a Jack in the Box. I used to get their uh, crispy chicken sandwich, uh, Southwest chicken salad. Uh, their salad, really good. So I'd get that coming home from work every now and then. Right. And they had a guy there that was so courteous and polite and professional. Yeah. And every time I'd go through with uh, with Julie, I'd be like, I, like I want to, I almost want to build a business to hire this guy. Like yeah. he was that good. It's like. I'm sure somebody at some point grabbed him because he was only there for like a year. But just, you know, when, when you get good customer service at a place like that, yeah. cause you know, you know, well, the case isn't true anymore. They're not making much. They're making pretty good money now. Some places, right. I don't think Nevada's yeah. really caught up to like California or whatever, whatever it may be. But like you said, she's a little bit older and she's there working. Yeah. yeah. And for somebody to give her a compliment, not only did you make her day and she got a tip where they probably don't get many tips or right. whatever it may be, but. She's going to talk about that for the next month. She's going to call <laughs> yeah, her daughter might. or grandkids. Yeah. Like that's a big deal. Yeah. So I, I, I love to hear that. Um, speaking of food, yes. uh, Julie and I, well, wait a minute. Two nights ago, we celebrated your birthday. It was a couple days yes, after. Thank you. Yeah, Where did was, we go? We went to. That was a great time. We went to El Michoacan. Yeah. Lindo. Uh, Lindo Michoacan. I'm sorry. Lindo Michoacan in the Palace, Palace Station. Station. It's yeah. new. Back of the Palace right. Station. It's a newer one. Yeah. Very nice in there. Very clean. Food was good. Yeah. Had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, what else? <laughs> <laughs> you could throw the video out there. What else? <laughs> had the had the birthday song sung for me. Hey! The sombrero put on the hat. Happy <laughs> birthday sh- to you. I shot in my mouth without me knowing it coming. <laughs> good thing I'm not allergic to alcohol, right? Yeah. Or good thing I'm not a you know, recovering alcoholic or I anything know. like that. But I could know. you imagine? I know. But uh, no, it was it was good. It was a fun time. Yeah. Um but yeah, 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 it was, it was nice. very it was nice. Good. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, no, great. that was a good time. You, you, and Julie and I went out, and uh, but that's a good point. And you know what's funny is I was telling somebody we both know today. I'll name, won't name, but um, they are a recovering alcoholic. Yeah, and I was telling them I actually showed the video. Yeah, and the person was like, "Oh, is that alcohol?" And I said, "Yeah," and he was like, "Oh man, like did he know?" No, I and a man know. like I love the I love the spirit of the whole singing and the mm-hmm. hat and the shot. I get it, I, and I don't want to be Debbie Downers about it. But what if it is a freaking yeah. recovering alcoholic? And that guy yeah. pretty much said, "Boom, boom." And and I don't I don't drink much. We go out maybe a couple beers and that's it. Liquor, I, I but that shot I really don't do liquor. I, I can't no. remember. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I never really got into liquor. But yeah, yeah then, then we talked about yeah. that. Yeah, alcohol in general is just. Yeah. Uh, you Maybe, know, yeah. it's not a big part of my life. It never has been. And yeah. um, well, I can't lie. A couple of years ago, draft days, NBA draft, well, draft days draft, with George. Yeah. I mean, that was that was <laughs> kind of the exception of the rule. But that yeah. was years ago. So yeah. when I was talking to this person today, I could see it in their face. Like, yeah. man, I don't like that. And see, uh, we talked about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, like you said, allergic to alcohol. You're allergic Holy to smokes. it, yeah, and you don't know what's coming. And yeah. But, you know, it was fun. Overall, it was fun. It was a good yeah. time. And then we went and got some dessert after. And we got some dessert. For, like, the third time in, <laughs> third time in a third week. Third time in, like, ten days. Yeah. We go to the, the Golden, what is it called? The Brass Fork, which is their cafe. The cafe. And uh, got the, either, the, one day it's the brownie Sunday. This one was the book, the, the book, kabuzuki. The, or the buki or boos, Kind of half boos, cookie, half brownie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was on Monday night. Bus- and then, the book, uh, the bus- Buski, bus- or Buski. Buski, or Buski, or Buski or something like that. Yeah. Br- Bruski. Bruski. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Bruski. Whatever it was. <laughs> um, and then last night, Julie and I went down and ate at the tailgate. Um, I can't remember the second name of the word, the tailgate restaurant. Um, tailgate social. Tailgate social. Yeah. Man, yeah. it was great. It, we got there during happy hour. So we got a, uh, their, their tailgate nachos and some cheese quesadillas. And I got the, um, Oysters Rockefeller, a yeah. dollar twenty-five per oyster, which is phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. And man, they tasted so good. Um, and then after that, Julie and I went and got a dessert at the 
brass fork again. <laughs> so that was the fourth dessert in 10 days. The pitch up yeah, we called Mike, send him a picture. Um, <laughs> so yeah, good stay. I'm excited to get up to uh, the Red Rock for a couple days. You know, this time of year, even though it's staying in town, yeah. we get to do something different and have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a coach, I don't get to leave too, too much. I could, you know, get some vacation time to get out of town. Like, you know, we went to um, Carlsbad yeah. a couple weeks ago and... Um, we can get out of town, but it's always great when you can. That's why I love Vegas. Yeah. Is you know a staycation in Vegas is kind of like a a little mini vacation. Mini vacation, yeah. And Red Rock is eighteen seconds from my house yeah. with a phenomenal pool, great restaurants, yeah. uh, a few restaurants that we want to try that we haven't tried yet, and uh, you know shoot into work for a couple hours and shoot back to the resort. Yeah, so a little bit of best of both worlds. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was fun. Birthday dinner was fun. Um, and to put a bow on that fifty and over tournament, man, they got can can you can you see that? I didn't even notice that the other oh, day. Yeah. Oh, Dan. I mean, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that. <laughs> it's physical though. That's I, good. I like that. Oh, I, mean, I got I, it. I, I like I, it. Listen, yeah. I I learned quickly in the first game when we played Houston. This is going to be a physical tournament. Yeah. Like they, these guys were here. They come again. They come from all over the country, paying a lot of money to come yeah. to this tournament. Yeah. And uh, I'm just walking in like. I hadn't yeah. played a full game in about six months, uh, but it was fun. It was a good group of guys. I got to play with uh, Coach Tracy. Um, yeah. They had a couple different age brackets. These guys are lifelong friends, and uh, it was a blast. I'm excited. Next year, I'll probably get in a little bit better shape for it because yeah. I could not move <laughs> for about 48 hours after that. It was bad. My knees were swollen. Oh, my neck, great. my neck's still not right. You notice I'm kind of turning yeah. like this, uh, but I know it was, it was super fun. And one of the cool parts about it, kind of coach's corner but not, is uh, as so many things happened before, during, and after that tournament that I could relate with my basketball players. Okay. So I'd make little videos and tell them, like, and I'll, I'll share one with you, is uh, I, after the first game, we beat Houston, and we had about five hours in between games. So I, I drove home because yeah. I live in Vegas. Yeah. So I drove home, picked up Julie. We got lunch, got to sit back, relax, hydrate, all that stuff. Get back in the car, start driving down to Henderson, which is about 40 minutes away from my house. And I'm like, where's my uniform? Because it's uniform. Like, it's yeah. full-blown uniforms. Yeah. I couldn't find my uniform top. I had my shorts. Couldn't find my top. I'm like, oh, man. I'm about 15 minutes into the drive to Henderson. I'm like, I got to turn around and go home. I think it's at home now. I might be late for the game. Like, I'm poor time management by me. Go home. I was like, I didn't bring it in. Couldn't find it. Get in the car. Text the group. Now I'm driving to the game, and we're playing the defending champs. Yeah. This is the, the actually the, the champs, the team that won it all. That's who we're about to play. Very good team. A lot of pros, a lot of former players. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm driving in there thinking, I'm going to let my team down. Like, Again, I had that feeling from a player's perspective. I'm going to show up. I don't have my uniform. I'm not going to be able to play. I just had a great game. These guys are all excited to play with me, and now I'm going to let them down. And I had those thoughts and feelings, and I'm like, man. I'm like, you know what? Let me just go. I get there. Somebody found my jersey, gave it to me. I ended up playing, and we knocked off the team yeah. that won it all. So I kind of made a little video to my girls about being prepared, leaving early, yeah. and making sure you got your stuff. And it happens to me, the coach. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but that feeling of, man, I'm – you know, nervous. So it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I hadn't played in a tournament like that probably since Chuck Minker. Yeah, back oh, in the I day, those days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, three, four games in a in a day. In a day, yeah. Um, so it was, you know, fifty-two years old. It was a. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a lot, man. It was, it was a, a lot, lot of back basketball. then when we were doing it at Minker. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. The first game was at eleven a.m. and we. So 24 hours, and we finished at two. So what is that? 24, 25, 26, 27 hours. I played five games yeah, in 27 that's hours, that's tough, and I did not come out much. Yeah, so that's tough. anyway, it was fun. Um, we're going to get Eric Lopes on the line. Oh, Eric, yes. East Sweat. Eric. Let's see how much I want to give you about Eric Lopes. Now, Eric said he's, he's down to talk about the Celtics win, not so much the draft because he doesn't okay. follow the draft like most. E Sweat is in the building. What's going on, man? Eric, you're on live with the Doodoo and Foo show. We're super happy to have you. We're just filling them in a little bit about you. We're not going to talk draft because, eh, who cares, right? Celtics won a championship. 
<laughs> so, what you got to talk about today? but there there are a couple dukies, and we know that you're a big uh, fan of Duke. Um, the couple dukies in the in the draft, and uh, but let's just skip right to the meat of the bones. Tell us about how you're feeling with the Boston Celtics winning Banner 18. I tell you, I saw something interesting the other day on Facebook. Uh, somebody posted, you know how they always put these two teams together and they say who would win based on, you know, 10 years ago. Yep. Um, they had the 08 versus the 24 mm. Celtics. Mm. 08, 24, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Yep. But uh, yeah. it was kind of interesting because 75 to 85% was all choosing the 08 team. Yep. And I kind of looked at it and I'm like, you know, Rondo was a, a big time assist man, but he didn't really score well. Ray yep. Allen was, you know, he shot his threes, but he was, to me, he wasn't really a, an all star type of player. Yep, yep. Um, Garnett, I would give the the benefit to because mm-hmm. he, you know he's got five inches on Jalen Brown, but Perkins would get eaten up by either Horford or Porzingis. Yeah, that's not. And, yeah. You know what I mean? You look yeah. at Tatum and Pierce. I mean, you can say that's a wash. I think Tatum's more athletic, but I really, I, I'd shoot for the 24 over the 18. That's a great question. What do you think, Mike? Oof. It's 24 team. It, they went through everybody. I mean, they look so good. Like we said before, did they make it look this easy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Did, was it made easy for them because of the injuries, as, as everybody wants to say, or did they just make it look easy? Yeah. Who was the other guard on that 08 team? Was it P- uh, was Pierce the two? Who was the two? Oh, Ray Allen. Ray Allen. Yeah. So now you got you got uh, you probably got White on Allen defensively, which is uh, that's a heck of a matchup. Yeah. And then yeah. you got Drew Holiday and Rondo, which again is a heck of a matchup. And like you say, Pierce, Pierce and uh, and Tatum was a heck of a matchup. Yeah. No, that's yeah. a that's an interesting one. Well, I believe it's the I mean, I, I, I've seen I've seen Holiday the. Uh, um, Luke going going blank right now. Anthony Davis, yeah, you know, with the Lakers. I mean, he's covered bigs all year. He scores in the paint. Yeah, you know, I I definitely give him the advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, no, it's um, it's exciting. We, we I dropped a a little nugget um on the last podcast that that this Celtics team has the record of the most 50 point wins in NBA history, the most 40 point wins, the most 30 point wins and the most 25 point wins. So I think people just, because they didn't play teams to their full potential in the Eastern conference playoffs, everybody's just kind of saying it was a, a joke year, but it wasn't, they had very few losses in the West coast yeah. and they're about to resign everybody except for your boy O'Shea. Brissett, yeah, yeah. Brissett's out of here. Yeah, Cuse um, in the house. <laughs> he's a Cuse in the Cuse used to be in the house. I don't think he's going to be in the house anymore. Um, so everybody's back, Eric. What is the prediction for next year? I think we're going to get Bronny James and go all the way again. <laughs> <laughs> now the Eric. question: the question is, do, do they take him at the end of the first round or the end of the second? As trade bait. Oh, I say you're going to say exactly what I just said. We just had George Thomas on. Go ahead, say it. Take him as trade bait. Yeah, I mean, you don't want him. I mean, he, he, I don't think he's NBA ready, to be honest with you. But do you think he will be? Do you think he will be in five years? Could he be a superstar? Could he be? He, he definitely, no, he's not going to be a superstar. He, he may play. I mean, with his dad, if, you know, look at it this way. If LeBron wasn't in the draft, I mean, if LeBron wasn't an NBA player and you just saw him, would you pick him? Oh no, no. I, I don't think he's getting. Everybody not knows he's not getting drafted. Yeah, he's getting drafted because of his name and blah blah blah. blah he blah. might not get drafted. Don't be surprised exactly. if he doesn't. And, it, mm. Could and be. if you look at his ratings, his ranking, he was. Uh, I think he was like sixty-eight, sixty-nine about two weeks ago. Now all of a sudden he's fifty-four, and the Lakers got the fifty-fifth pick. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That'll be interesting. I, you know what? I, I'm not rooting for or against him. I'm kind of neutral on. I'm I'm neutral on LeBron, anyways. Like, I just don't. I understand the greatness, but I also there's a lot of things I don't like, and it's not just because he's a Laker. Because I, it was all the way back to Miami, and yeah. I don't know. I just don't. I don't love him or hate him. Yeah. And the same with Bronny. I really I'm kind of indifferent about Bronny. Like, if he does well, great. If he's if he does well in six years, he might be something special. Yeah. I don't know. He's yeah. got those genes, man. Um, 
Eric, so we just asked uh, we just asked George Thomas. We got two questions for you. Number one, who has the best handles in the history of the NBA? Wow, that's a tough one. I'm a huge Kyrie fan. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm a huge Kyrie fan. But then uh, I can skip to my lose up there. Mm, Rafer. Uh, for Austin. Sham, sham God. I mean, there's, there's a ton. Well, see now, this is this is John Crawford. You know, Jamal, Jamal Crawford. Crawford. There. Yeah, Jamal Crawford is there. Yeah, Kenny uh, Anderson. I, I, Kenny Anderson. Tim Marbury was decent, but I, I I'd have to go with Urban. Okay, so okay. you and George are on the same same wavelength. He said Kyrie. He didn't hesitate. He's like, it's not close, Kyrie. Um, yeah. yeah, no, he went. So Kyrie both. Now I'm going to give you a different second question than him. Which country invented ice cream? Which country? Wow. <laughs> That's an odd question. <laughs> Eric. And I, and I can't cheat in Google because I'm driving, so. Yeah, that's why I got you and George both in the car in traffic. <laughs> Which country invented ice cream? Hey, Surrey. No Give it a guess. Come on, a country. Which country? Canada? Begins with a C. You were close. China invented ice cream. How about that? China invented ice cream. Now we know. Yeah, now we know. Never thought. Well, listen, we're going to get you on the show a little bit more. Um, because we're getting ready to start talking about NFL training camp, and you're a big Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, so. <laughs> yeah. Wrong show. Oh, wrong show. Oh, no. you just following Brady. Is that what you were doing? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm busting his chops. He's a he's a Philadelphia Die Eagles fan. Yeah. Diehard Eagles, yeah. As a matter of fact, he came out. Uh, Eric was out this uh, this winter, and we hung out at my brother's house and had some of the most amazing food. What was that? What was that dish? Oh, yeah. Hawaiian, Hawaiian sliders. Oh, those Hawaiian sliders mm. were unbelievable. My I, brother's I wife made twice. them. I can't do it. Yeah, no, unbelievable. But we sat and watched a, a, a Philly a, a Eagles game. It, it was a it was a close game too. Did they come from behind and win that? Yeah, they did. They did, yeah. And I actually found myself rooting for them because, you know, us Patriots fans don't have a lot to root for nowadays. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's gonna be a minute. But listen, we're gonna get you on the show a little bit more when football starts rolling around. And uh, good luck to your guy Flipakowski out of Duke. I was just going to ask you, Eric, where do you think he goes? How early do you think he goes? Late first round, maybe. Okay. Yep, that's right. where I have him. Okay. Yeah, I have him, uh, without telling George where I have him, I have him 24. I have him a little bit later than most. I think there might be a surprise. What was George saying? Well, I don't know. That's uh, We we trade lists at, right at, at, at the deadline when the trade starts. Um, so I, I'll see his list. He'll see mine, blah, blah, blah. This old little game we play. Well, hopefully we'll be out there in October, so. Yeah, we'll get you live on the show, right in the studio. Yeah, there we go. Sounds good. All right, bud. Have a good night. Bye. Right. Happy birthday to Mike. Yay! Happy birthday, Mike. Hey, happy birthday, you, Mike. <laughs> hey, throw a shot down. <laughs> My right. man. Lucille's in October. Yeah. Lucille's. Ah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. All right, All right bud. All right, brother. I'll see you. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Always good to hear from him. Another good example, too, as we're sitting here talking about yeah. birthday and blah, blah, blah. Eric doesn't drink. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Doesn't drink. Yeah. Can you imagine if we did that for yeah. his birthday and all of a sudden, bang, right? I yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And it's something we would have done. Hey, our buddy's coming birthday. I don't yeah, know how we got back Not knowing it was it. coming. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you talk about Eagles fans, man. Eric's, uh, he's he's top of the list, man. He's <laughs> He is a diehard Eagles Eagles fan. But um, well, what do you think? What uh, I know you don't watch the draft quite as much, but um, what? You got the Knicks. We we actually discovered, you know, there's a trade before. Yeah. There was a trade yesterday. Yep. Tell us about that. Well, they got Michael Bridges, right, mm-hmm. from uh, from the Nets. Straight from Villanova. Straight from Villanova. <laughs> it's one of the guys the Knicks have been looking at for a couple of years. They've been a lot of, you know, a few guys on that list have been looking for that breakout player, that score, or another score. Um, I, I, I think it's great um, if they re-sign OG. Yeah. Right, if they get OG back with Bridges, Randall stays healthy. I yeah. think the Knicks are going for it next year. Yeah, they're gonna we'll, make a run. We'll find out, obviously, because of OG. But um, they gave up a bunch of draft picks, which is what they've been accumulating, anyways, mm-hmm. to get this big player. Donovan Mitchell's always been on that list. Yeah. Murray's been on that list. Jamal Bridges Murray, yeah. has been on the list. Yeah, right? Jamal Murray. Yeah, uh, but they finally went out and got Bridges. Yeah, 
It's big uh, hit, man. Yes. I mean, uh, the Knicks got better now. They if they can keep OG, see what happens in the draft. They do yeah. have two first round late late first round picks in the draft right. this year. So will they package them? Do they need a draft pick? Do they package those up and try to get a couple picks next year? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting. But um, yeah, I don't know. I you know what? This draft is interesting, not just because of the uncertainty of so much of it. I just, you know, so many weird names like the two big men, uh, Klingham. Uh, Kling, I think Klingham. he's moving up. He is moving up. Yeah. He has moved up. Yeah. I have him pretty high. Yeah. I've seen lists that have him even higher. Oh, yeah. That's, and then yeah. you got Zach Eady, at, you know, around the teen, and somewhere in the teens. You just don't know how these guys are going to be. It's such right. an unpredictable right. draft. And even the some of the guards out there, um, I. There's not a lot of name recognition with this draft. No, and right. we talked Correct. about it a couple months ago. There was more name recognition in the WNBA draft. Yeah, oh yeah. Than there is. Like I'm yeah. I'm making the list. <laughs> I do this every year for since 1988 apparently. Yeah. I don't know 80% of these yeah, names. I mean, it's... once I look up what college they're from, then I can kind of piece it together. But there's so many names on yeah. here that I have no clue. So, I'm excited. It's going to be a We'll have a we'll have an answer next week, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday. We do the show. We'll have a recap yeah. of the draft. We'll have George on because we'll put it this way: George will call in if he wins. Yeah. If yeah. he doesn't, he won't. So <laughs> if if I win, I'll be bragging. If he wins, yeah. I'm sure he'll want to call in. And uh, yeah, yeah, NBA draft. How about It'll that? Be fun. I think the that connect is moving up too, right? Oh, uh, he's Tennessee, tough, right? Yeah, Dalton is yeah, Dalton? Dalton connect. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's um, moving up. He's 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 got some draft buzz shoot. about him. Yeah, he can, he shoot, can score. Right? He can yeah. find it. Yeah, oh yeah. To me, he's a little bit like McDermott, a little bit. Yeah. McBuckets. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that it translates in the NBA. It might. It might not. And we didn't even get to, which we're out of time now. But we didn't even get to uh, uh, the the uh, the press conference with JJ Redick. Some of the oh, stuff yeah. coming out of that. Holy smokes, yeah. what a train wreck. But anyway, <laughs> we're at the end of our time today. Um, Want to thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back. Either Wednesday or Thursday next week. We'll decide. Yeah. I don't know. I guess our options are Wednesday, do it early. Thursday, do it here. Or maybe Thursday, do a remote show for uh, for 4th of July. Try try the equipment out somewhere else. Yeah. We'll and, uh, yeah. and we'll do that. So have fun on your on your trip. Thank you. And then we'll be back. And hopefully we'll get a few more call-ins. If you guys have any interest in uh, commenting or be part of the show, reach out to me directly and we'll get you on. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, we'll Thank see you, you next week. Thank you. Take care.